Imagine sitting in a conference room and the people you're meeting with, who are in some faraway remote location, appear in 3D in an empty chair at the table. They appear like semi-transparent holograms, interacting as if they were in the room. Or imagine collaborating with coworkers on a 3D image of your new product, projected on a table in front of you in 3D, allowing you to walk around it, see it operating from all angles. Well, these are the things coming from Magic Leap, a new augmented reality startup and the latest project from Chris Matthew. I caught up with Chris on a sunny patio at the Latimer Estate in Buckinghamshire in the UK during ComCon 2019, where Chris was delivering a keynote on the future of communications. And if you haven't met Chris, you really should. He's got a very diverse set of interests and an infectious personality that makes almost everyone an instant friend. But before we get to the future, let's rewind a little bit and get to know Chris and some of his past endeavors. I asked Chris to share his story from his early days. Hey, everybody. I'm Chris Matthew, and I currently work for Magic Leap, but I've been in this telecom space for maybe a decade, and it's cool to regroup with all of my friends. So about 10 years ago, uh, I started my first uh, company called Digital Voice Technologies, and it was uh, really the beginning of my telecom introduction, you know, by fire, if you will. Um, it was one of the, we built one of the world's first voice XML voice browsers. So that was when, you know, everyone was kind of saying, recognizing that proprietarily coded IVR systems, interactive voice response systems, were kind of like, like an, a thing of the past that, that we really needed to standardize on a new language that was called voice XML. And you'd basically write IVRs like you do web pages today. So we built that company, um, uh, it took it to um, a revenue, I think of around, at the time, I think we were doing about $50,000 a month in, in revenue. We had hosting services inside of WorldCom. This is back in the day. Um, and uh, I think we were even charging like 25 cents per minute for calls coming into this, you know, this platform we built which was, you know, amazing opportunity, like money while you sleep. It was just brilliant. We sold that company to a group called Ideas and Associates out of Canada um, and then uh, started thinking about what was next. And the interesting thing was Twilio was just coming onto the scene. Twilio and then Tropo was also coming on the scene. They were concepts around like uh, telecom APIs or telecom as a service. And I was fascinated by it, but I thought I could do something better or easier or quicker than them with the voice XML knowledge I had already had from digital voice technology. So I started another company called Teleku. Teleku, the idea behind that, it was a very similar REST API for telecom. So you could do voice, even speech recognition, text-to-speech, even text messaging, all via a REST API, but the catch was that I was dynamically transpiling or transcoding the REST API to voice XML. So rather than writing you know, a pure communications cloud platform from scratch, I was able to convert you know, in and outbound you know, activity in and out of voice XML to the REST API or vice versa, which means that Teleku could run on any voice XML, you know, provider, you know, that was out there that was really breathing new life into those systems. And I kept running into the Twilio guys and the Tropo guys on Twitter. And what was funny is um, uh, both of them entered into acquisition discussions with me in the same week. Oh, and I was yeah. very transparent with them, you know, hey, these guys are these guys and these guys and uh, uh, we were acquired by uh, Tropo, and uh, I spent you know the next couple of years at Tropo as head of uh, business development for Tropo. But that's where I started getting into you know Astracon and Teleku could also run on top of Asterisk. You know, there was a there was an IVR uh, or there was a voice XML browser that ran on top of Asterisk. So um, that's where I started meeting like the coolest people. They're like my people. Like we could. We had so many things in common from from telephony to VoIP to even ham radio and motorcycle riding, yeah, you know, like yeah. like with you there, Alan. And so, I mean, it, this is a really close industry, close friends. And I just love the idea that everyone gets together once or twice a year and 
catches up. And I mean, we're in beautiful uh, Birminghamshire at, at this spy headquarters, 500 year old building estate. And um, I couldn't imagine spending a, a better time in a better place with better friends. This is fantastic. Well, Chris also shared a fascinating look at the future of communications during his keynote speech, sharing what he worked on at Magic Leap, along with the live demonstration so you could put on the headset and experience it for yourself. So let's take a listen. Well, that's great. Well, one of the things uh, we really, I think a lot of folks are really intrigued by is some of the newer innovations that you've been working on. Uh, and you've brought with you some uh, AR headsets uh, that we, has had us lined up too deep all afternoon, all yesterday afternoon and all today here at the conference, uh, getting a chance to enter a world, a virtual world that's uh, augmented or layered over the physical world that we're within. Uh, and I'd love to share, I'd love to share, uh, you know, have you share a brief description of, of what this is all about. And then, um, and then let's kick around some ideas for where it can go and different applications for it besides just gaming. Oh, yeah. I love that. Yeah. So uh, the Magic Leap, it's not your typical, it's not virtual reality that a lot of people are familiar with. And it's not necessarily augmented reality, which a lot of people Think about like Pokemon Go, where you're just kind of laying digital content, you know, uh, through the camera on the real world. Magic Leap looks at this more as like mixed reality or spatial computing is, is what we refer to it as. And it's this idea where the glasses, the Magic Leap glasses mesh like it, they literally you as you look around your room or your space or your the outdoors, it meshes the physical world in such a way where it understands there's a table here, there's a chair there, there's there's walls there. And what it does is it blends digital content into the real world. So we're playing a robot game uh, just, just now, and yep. the robots are coming out of the wall. There's like a, a universe in the wall that, that's a whole, that's, that's like thousands of robots inside of the wall building other robots to come into your world to kill you, right? Um, the robots understand, you know, that there's a chair there. They can climb up on the chair, or climb or crawl under the table or hide behind a couch. And you really have to, like, go behind the couch to shoot the robot. So yeah. it's it's a it's a very new technology that, yeah, we, we've done a lot of fun games here at this event. But you can definitely do you can imagine what you could do in, in, a, in an enterprise setting where you're you're collaborating with with uh, uh, colleagues, you know, looking at 3D models. Um, we talked a lot about yesterday about holoporting, like yep. the idea that you could like a like a like the Star Wars Council, Jedi Council, you can like or the Kingsman movie. You can all just just from Tokyo, from London to Phoenix, you know, all come in together, sit at the same table and look at each other like you're you're all physically here in person. So your mind could wander what what you could do with that. Yeah, it was, uh, and it's a really unique experience. It's hard to describe. I've, you know, put the VR headsets on and been in a virtual world. And of course, as you say, you know, with uh, Pokemon Go and some of the other applications where you held your phone up in front of your face, um, you're looking at augmented reality through your phone. But this is more an immersive situation uh, or experience. And as you say, you know, just in some of the games we just played, you know, the robots would rush to you and you'd kind of instinctively <laughs> spring back because you were <laughs> running into you. And uh, uh, it's quite an experience. But in the applications, uh, at lunchtime, we were having this great conversation at our table about some of the ways that it can be used. Um, we just were throwing ideas out. And one of them that sort of stuck was uh, you imagine in real estate that you could decorate a room uh, with virtual furniture so that people could envision when they're buying this house um, it could have maybe very cosmopolitan furniture. And then they say, well, yeah, actually, I would like to see the room with much more maybe colonial furniture. And you could push a button and click, and you could change to different furniture styles in the room. So it would be uh, a way for people to envision something. And then one of the other people at the table talked about, imagine you'd be able to take the disabled people and bring them to places that they would never normally ever be able to get to, you know, the tops of mountains um, and uh, deep under sea. We were just um, looking also, too, at um, some... Um, well, it's large whales leaping out of the ocean in the middle of the ocean. So fascinating to technology. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as you bring it together. And uh, I'll be watching carefully, and I'm sure lots of others will be. 
Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, you you mentioned about the furniture. We have a, an app from Wayfair on on the Magic Leap platform. You literally can browse a website like catalog, like you do in 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 uh, in the space here, and then you could say, "Oh, I like that sofa. I like that chair. I like this chandelier." You literally can pull them out of the website and at scale put them in your your room, change the color, move them around. If your spouse has uh, a set of glasses on he or she can move move them wherever they don't like where you put them they can move them where they want and at the end of the, at the, the day you can hit buy and it all just shows up for real and like to your point scale i think is so important like especially in a work environment like imagine working on like the space shuttle you literally could have a 3d model of the space shuttle here in the yard in the, where you can just look at it or, or walk around it or maybe walk inside of it. Yeah. And it, and that's where I think, you know, that you, you can kind of think of, well, the, the mobile devices are cool, but when you've got the glasses on and you see things in the real world that respect the real world at that kind of scale, I think that's just mind blowing to me. I mean, like we had the whale swimming around uh, the the conference room. We've got a full size elephant. That's just amazing. Like to stare at an elephant that's swinging its trunk at you, and uh, the application lets you hold your hands, cup your hands, and hold them out in front of you, and it jumps into your hands like a little baby elephant. And just as your imagination could go wild, or yeah. I could think of the enterprise applications where. You might want to shrink the space shuttle down, you know, to put it on the table here for us to look at and yeah. then say, no, let's throw it, throw it out in the middle of the, the yard. And now it's full size again. Yeah, there's amazing future opportunities. It's great fun. Great fun. And uh, it's going to be uh, really interesting to watch these applications come together. And I'm really excited about following them. And uh, appreciate you spending the time with us, and also whoever's smashing <laughs> bottles over the other side of the wall. Getting ready for tonight. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, thanks again, Chris. Appreciate your time spending a few minutes with us, and look forward to more uh, as things develop. Likewise, thank you very much, Alan. It was fun catching up with you at the conference. Chris is just one of the fascinating people that have changed the way we communicate, and I've had the fortune to spend some time with and share with you, our listeners. There are many more past interviews on the Telecom Disruptor podcast and much more to come. Be sure to give a thumbs up, a like, or subscribe on the podcast platform of choice. There are more great interviews to come.